In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the Sacred Heart of Jesus, and the Immaculate Heart of Mary, one with Louisa, the little daughter of the Divine Will, I enter into the Holy Divine Will. Come, Divine Will, come beat in my every heartbeat, come breathe in my every breath, come pray, adore, and reign in me. In the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future, in, with, through, and for Jesus, Mary, and Louisa, in, with, and for all, that all may be for the glory of God and the good of all souls giving to God as if all lived in the most holy divine will. United with creation, redemption, and sanctification, praying as one in that one eternal act. For the kingdom to come, Reign on earth. Fiat. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be, Our Lady Queen of all saints. Pray for us. In the of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So, Jesus says in this paragraph, but we'll go and go right down to the next one. Do you think that it is a sanctity like other sanctities? This, See, this is the reason why the Vatican is, asto- it's, it's astonished by what they read. To my supplications, and I formed. Is that right? Yeah. All right. And I formed the seed of a, a of a good so great. So the, it's Jesus's prayer that started this, and so that this seed might be known, I taught my prayer to the apostles, and they transmitted it to the whole church, so that just as the people of the future Redeemer found salvation in Him, and disposed itself to receive the promised Messiah, in the same way. This seed formed by me, the church, in praying and repeating my very prayer many times, might dispose herself to receive the good of the rec- recognition and loving of my celestial Father as their Father in such a way as to serve to be loved as children and receive the great good that my divine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So Jesus says, as he planned for 4,000 years the Messiah... He is now He is now planned for the last 2000 years the divine will to reign In this seed and this hope that my divine will be done on earth as it is in heaven the very saints have formed their sanctity and the martyrs have shed their blood There is no good which does not derive from this seed of the divine will. So the whole church prays, and just as the tears and the penances and the prayers to obtain the Messiah were directed toward that excelling Virgin Mary, whom I, God, was to dispose in order to centralize such a great good in her, 
so that they might receive their Savior, even though they did not know whom she would be, in the same way, when the, when the church recites the Our Father, it is precisely for you, Louisa, that she prays. Now think about that. The Our Father... El Padre Nuestro, eso es muy importante. Now see, this is why the Vatican... Por eso el Vaticano está como que, wow, asombrado y... Yeah. It steps back because it is precisely for you that the church prays the Our Father. Es precisamente por ti, Luisa, que la iglesia ora el Padre Nuestro. And we'll just translate this. So that I may centralize in you para que yo pueda centralizar en ti all the good that my divine will contains. Todo el bien que mi divina voluntad contiene. The way and the how de la manera y el cómo the divine will may have life on earth la divina voluntad pueda tener vida en la tierra as it does in heaven como lo tiene en el cielo so what's what's happening is it's a new beginning for mankind lo que está pasando es que es un nuevo and again this is not humanidad. holy or good or saintly y esto no es bueno o santo no tiene nada que ver con eso this is a divine way of living esta es una manera divina de vivir now going back to the Vatican regresando al Vaticano uh, there are some in the Vatican who are afraid Hay algunos en el Vaticano que tienen miedo because their lives are going to change. Porque sus vidas van a cambiar. They can't continue to live the way they're living. No pueden continuar viviendo de la manera que están viviendo. Uh, in the church. En la iglesia. Uh, yeah. So, uh, but again, the way and the how. De la manera y el cómo. The divine will has life on earth as it does in heaven. La divina voluntad va a tener vida. Is found, is found in the writings. Uh, that one line there is precisely for you, Luisa, that the church prays. See, it has to be, it has to be a human. It's not the son of God's job. It's not the mother of God's job. It's a human's job. Now why? Adam was a human. Adam was supposed to give this to us. And Adam fell. So Jesus comes as the new Adam. Mary comes as the new Eve. And they give this life to Louisa. Esta vida a Luisa. The way and the how to live it. La manera y el cómo vivir en ella. That's why she wrote the 36 volumes. Por eso escribió los 36 volumes. Now it's our job. Y es nuestro trabajo. If we choose. Si escogemos. If we say fiat. Si, si decimos nuestro fiat. To read this. To study esto, this. Estudiarlo. And to put it into practice. Into practice. Begin to live it. Empezar a vivir. And the, again, the consequences are peace, joy, and happiness. It's to live heaven on earth. So we'll continue. And even though, Luisa, you are not known, by echoing my prayer, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, the entire church prays to me. The entire church presses me to centralize all this good in a second virgin. So that, like a second savior, she may save uh, unsaved humanity and making use of my inseparable love and my mercy, I may answer my own prayer, united to that to the whole church, and making man come back to his origin, to the purpose for which I created him. And that is that my divine will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, these are. Again, wonderful things to, to hear and also uh, makes me nervous. Because it can be greatly misunderstood. He says very clearly. Uh, the church prays to me. La iglesia ora, me pide y ora that I put all of this in one another virgin que yo ponga todo esto en otra vida. that like a second savior que como un segundo salvador, she may save unsaved humanity ella pueda salvar 
a la no salvada humanidad. That's, a, that's unbelievable. Eso es increíble. I mean, when you really look at this, who is this Luisa Picaretta? Cuando realmente vemos esto, who ¿quién is es she? Esta Luisa Picaretta? Who is she that ¿Quién? God is doing this with her? Que Dios está haciendo todo esto en ella. It's, it's not the mother of God. No es la madre it's de not Dios. the son of God. No es el hijo de Dios. It's a human. Es un humano. Who has been given a divine life. Le ha dado una vida and now God wants to give us y ahora Dios a that same divine life. Not just to be human, no nada más para ser but to share in divinity. Pero para en la when, when you look at this, cuando vean esto, cuando vean esto, this goes from black and white esto se va de, de blanco y negro into technicolor. A technicolor. It goes from two dimensional se va de, de dos to three dimensional. A tres it, it's, it's from a, a, a pencil drawing into a holistic, not a holistic, but a, what's that called? Hologram. Hologram. What's, what this is about is, and that's just nothing compared to what really is happening. Yeah, our, our God is saying to us, you're living dead, basically. You get old, gray-haired, wrinkled, and die. You become food for worms. And he says, I'm going to give you a preternatural life. And this is a life that has never been seen. Jesus possessed it. Mary possessed it. But they looked like regular people. What, what is going to happen is we're going to receive the preternatural life that Adam had before the fall. So it's not going to be just our bodies won't be able to die. Our bodies have to live forever. And Jesus says, well, you have to live in eternity. You're not trapped in time and space anymore. So when you when you look at that, when, so when you're praying, and, and you're going through this, and you ask Jesus, tell me what you see. Tell me what you want me to see. It would, for every one of us, it would be different. If we first, if I say, think of a color, everybody's thinking of a color. If I say, think of the color red, we all see it different shades and tones. If I say, think of an object that is red, you know, some think of fire trucks, some think of you know apples, some think of tomatoes. Uh, so even if it's an apple, it's in a different shape or a different size. See, God loves our uniqueness. And He wants to talk to this uniqueness. And as you read, what you read is going to be different than what I read. It's the same thing. But it's amazing. Because if you have been brought up uh, in one way, you will think completely different than another person. And that is good. The problem with teaching, they don't let everybody learn the way they're supposed to learn. Everybody has to write with their right hand. That's what I used to be. Everybody has to learn English. <laughs> Everybody. So you, you don't learn how to learn the way you you can learn. I taught I taught a class once in, in art. And everybody in the in classroom was was to draw. And uh, I uh, I said to each person, show me what you can do. And they drew. 
And I would say that line is good. That line is good. Do more of this. Everybody in the class produced a, a, a lot of material because they did what they could do perfectly. But it was nobody was the same. Nobody was the same. And I find in most schools, uh, they are, people are limited because of the professor. In the divine will, in the divine will, God is going to teach you the way you know how to learn. And you could advance very quickly to what one person could be reading for 30 years. You, and I've seen it happen. And the reason is they give their fiat. They say to God, let it be, let it be done to me as you say. Now, as the church starts studying this, and letting God have his way I think we're going to see some glorious things happen not only with the church but with each person ok so we'll continue so he says this is precisely the living in my divine will and everything I keep manifesting to you Louisa pushes you to this confirms you in this this is the great foundation I keep forming in your soul. In order to do this, I keep centralizing in you all the graces, past, present, and future, which I have given to all human generations. Now, that's what God is doing with us. He is pushing us to learn these truths, to confirm in us these truths, in order, as he says, to centralize in us all the graces of all the saints if if we're linked to Luisa I, I, again don't limit what God wants to do what God wants to do is so astonishing uh, you're just being in awe of what he wants to do even more listen to this I double them I multiply them because since my divine will is the greatest, it is the holiest, it is the most noble thing, which has no beginning and no end, in order to place it in one creature, Louisa, it is right that Antichorus, that I centralize in Louisa all possible goods, all innumerable graces, all divine purity, all divine nobility, so that this holy will of mine may have the same cortege as it has, as it has in heaven. It is the same will that operated in redemption and wanted to make use of a Virgin Mary. What portents and prodigies of grace did it not work in Mary? My divine will is great. My divine will contains all goods. And in operating its acts with magnanimity, it is as if it was about doing good, it's about doing good works, excuse me, and if it is about doing works, and doing good for all of humanity, then it puts all of it at all of its good at stake. So here, <clears throat> God is asking us. Uh, let's just—he's uh, asking us to come to the greatest meal that He can produce. He's asking us to receive the most beautiful and most powerful vehicle on earth. He says to Luisa, your human will is a rusty pen. He says, give me your rusty penny and I will fill you with billions of dollars. And we say, if I give you my rusty penny, I won't have it anymore. And most people say, no, 
I can't give up my rusty pen. That's, it's my life. It's my misery. This is, this is how crazy this is. The divine will is everything. Billions of dollars. Billions. And all he says is, give me your rusty penny that's of no value. And, and we can't say yes. We can't say fiat. So Jesus says, <clears throat> now the divine will wants to make use of another virgin in order to centralize its divine will in Louisa and to begin to make known that its divine will must be done on earth as it is in heaven. And if in redemption it wanted to come to save lost man to satisfy for his sins, which man had no power to do, and to give him refuge and many other goods which redemption contains, now wanting to display even more love than in the redemption itself, by making my divine will be done on earth as it is in heaven, my divine will now comes to give man his state of origin, his state of divine nobility, and the purpose for which he was created. It comes to open the current between itself and the human will in such a way that absorbed by this divine will, being dominated by the divine will, the human will shall give the divine will life within itself, and my holy divine will shall reign on earth as it does in heaven. This is what God's doing. <clears throat> this is not fallen human nature. It's to share in divinity. It's to be that drop of water put into the chalice filled with wine. That drop of water becomes wine. It's not oil and water. It's, there's no separation. So, we're that drop of nothing. And Jesus says, Come into my divine will. Drop yourself into my divine will. And we, as we saw yesterday, Sister saw Asunta. She says, we must be fused in the divine will. So we are that drop of nothing into that cup of wine, fused and diffused, and we become wine. We, we share in divinity. So Jesus teaches Louisa that we are a drop of water that's put into the ocean of the divine will. Once we are in that ocean, everything belongs to us. All of divinity belongs to us. So I, he's asking us, would you please just give your fiat to say yes to this? Enter into this fusion with God and become like God. Yeah, so that drop of water in the ocean, everything in the ocean belongs to that drop. That drop, that drop can for all eternity go around looking at things, participating in things in the giant infinite ocean. This was that infinite bucket that God wants us to participate. He's going to, we're going to be showered. Uh, of everything that's in there. Everything that belongs to God belongs to us. So right now, you have a virtue or two. You know, I, I, have, I have a talent. I have an artistic talent. That's an angel. I have nothing. I have nothing. And one day I was painting and I was painting up on top and I said, holy angels, help me paint. So I painted it. It was the resurrection of Jesus. I was, it was painted it and I got down to about here and I stepped back and I went, 
magnificent. This is genius. I went, unbelievable. I said, I, 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 I am so talented. And then I stepped back and I painted. I got down to here. I stepped back and I went, oh my God, it's awful. It's horrible. Because I didn't pray. So I, I got down to here and I said, please, holy angels, help me, help me, help me. And I painted and it was beautiful. It was really beautiful. So when you looked at the, when you looked at the painting, you went, wow, oh, wow. It was just, the, it was awful. But see, see, we are nothing. And, and we have to learn to accept what God wants to give us. Yeah, so God's got great plans. Dios tiene grandes plans. And he can't find anybody that says yes. Y no encuentra nadie que le diga que sí. Even those that have said yes y hasta que han dicho que sí, have, have said no. Han dicho que no. Uh, our job es, is just to give our fiat. To study what we like, this what we just read is so important. Who is this Luisa Picaretta? Who is she? We went through all her volumes with the titles that Jesus gave her. There was 241 pages. Single space. Yeah. Of all her titles. It's, it's astonishing. Jesus loves her so much that when the church finally recognizes her, it's going to do what St. Padre Pio said. It's going to focus on Luisa Picaretta and the divine will uh, forever, basically. Yeah. It's, uh, when it happens, now, let me ask you a question. I'm going to ask you a question. <laughs> okay. What is it going to take to make every Muslim say, "I want to be Rome, uh, to be Catholic"? What is it going to take to make every Muslim, every Jew, every Buddhist, every Hindu, every Protestant say, "I want to be Catholic"? Something's coming that is so spectacular. It's so spectacular that everyone will run to be baptized in the church. Open up that pool back there. So Jesus says in volume 24, the last chapter of volume 24, that everyone is going to become Catholic. What, I'm like I'm thinking, what's going to make every Muslim say, Muhammad who? <laughs> They're all going to say, "I want to be Catholic." I want Mary to be the blessed, my blessed mother. I want to be baptized. I want to receive Holy Communion. I want to be confirmed. Well, well, I'm just saying, what's going to happen? that everyone is going to become Catholic. Well, Jesus said that. He did say, he says, I'm going to wage war against mankind and it's not a war of blood, it's a war of love. He did say that. So, but, but can you, can you, can you imagine what God has planned where everyone is going to say, I want to be Catholic? Well, 
No, I, I'm just saying what the divine will, what the di- what what the divine will is going to do is going to do something that's astonishing. The world is going to be in terror. The world is going to be wailing and grinding their teeth. We are going to be in ecstasy. What is coming that's going to make us so happy, so peaceful, so joyful that even the Muslims are going to give up their misery and embrace the church? What what could God possibly be going to do that will make the Muslims put down their weapons and embrace the church? I mean... Well, the fire from heaven is true. Right but, but, but how? Well, every 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 synagogue, every temple, every mosque, every church will be Catholic. There will be no Mormon tabernacles, Mormon, Mormon choir. It, everyone will be Catholic. So, what what is coming that's going to so astonish the world? Let me just give you. It's us living in the divine will. What, the, what God what God is calling us to do is to to embrace this life that has never been seen since Adam the fall of Adam the yeah. preternatural life and begin to live it this is this is you have to understand why we are alive today it's not just to be good Catholics it, it's to embrace Jesus' life, Mary's life, that was given to Louisa. Okay, so we'll continue. Divine 15, 7, 11, 13. Yeah, we'll find it back on track. Okay. Pardon? Yeah, we're good. Okay. <clears throat> My daughter, the greater the work I want to do, the more necessary it is that the creature I choose be unique and singular. The work of redemption was the greatest, and I chose only one creature, providing Mary with all the, gi- all the gifts never conceded to anyone, so that Mary might contain so much grace as to be able to become my mother. And so I, that I place... Uh, I place I might place in Mary all the goods of redemption and so that my Mary may keep all my gifts from the moment she was conceived until she conceived me I gave, I kept Mary hidden by the light of the most holy trinity who was her custodian and had the office of directing her in everything guess it was the holy trinity and then I was conceived in her virginal womb and being true leader and first of all priest, I myself took on the charge of keeping her and directing her in everything, even in the motion of her heartbeat. And when I died, I entrusted to her to another priest, St. John, a soul so privileged containing all graces unique in the divine mind, unique in history. I did not want to leave her without the assistance of my representatives up to her last breath. Have I perhaps done this with other souls? No, because they did not contain so much of good grace, gifts and graces, and therefore that much custody and assistance was not necessary. Now, Louisa, my daughter, you too are unique in my hand you and shall also be unique in history. Okay, that, that's very important. Louisa is going to be unique in all of history. There will be there will not be either before or after you another creature for whom I shall dispose as though forced by necessity the assistance of my ministers, having chosen you in order to place in you the sanctity, the goods, the effects, and the acts of my supreme will. It was covenant uh, convenient that just and decorous for, 
the very sanctity of my divine will contains that one of my ministers assist you and be the first depository of the goods contained in my divine will so as to let them pass from his lap unto the whole body of the church. That was St. Anna of the Francia. So, as Mary was protected by the priests, Louisa was protected by the priests. What a te great attention is required of you and of the priests, of you in receiving me like a second mother, the great gift of my divine will, in knowing all its divine qualities, and of them the priests, in receiving them from you, so that the fiat voluntas tua on earth as it is in heaven may be fulfilled in my church. Now you can understand why the Pope has to give this to the priests. Louisa is the mother, the new Eve, the third Eve. The Holy Father is the third, the third uh, Adam. Yes. Thank you. So again, it has to be given to the priests first. Uh, okay, and that doesn't make it's just proper order, you know. Uh, okay. And as and you do not know how much I had to give you to dispose your capacity to be able to place my divine will in you. I, God, had to remove all the seeds of corruption from you. I, God, had to purify your soul, your very nature, so that you would neither feel anything for them nor they for you. And because the seed is missing, it is as if the fire were missing to the firewood. Wood. And even though I did not exempt you from original sin, as I did with my dear mama, by removing from you the seed of corruption, I made another prodigy of grace, never conceded to anyone else, because it was decorous for my divine will, three times holy, to descend into a soul and take possession of her without her being shaded even the slightest by the slightest corrupt, corrupted breath. So here's another thing that the church is going to teach us. How God removed from Louisa the seed of corruption. Mary was free from original sin but Louisa was freed from the seed of corruption now what's really great is this <laughs> we're going to get that too we're going to be freed from the corruption the seed of corruption now the reason for the divine will is this. When Adam fell, it took it took four thousand years for Jesus and Mary to come. So you have this huge void here. When Jesus and Mary left, two thousand years, and then Louisa came. There's this huge void here. So here's these two voids that have to be filled. That's our job. To repair and redo in the divine will. It's going to, when this is done, it's going to look as if Adam never sinned. It's going to look as if we never sinned. This is the thing that so, is going to astonish us. Everything is going to be repaired. This is the prayer of the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful Catholics. Send forth your Spirit. And we will be recreated. And then you, Holy Spirit, will renew the face of the earth through us. It's through us. This is, this is the thing that's going to astonish us. At the end of Luisa's life, Luisa said to Jesus, I am Jesus, I am so sorry for my sins. And Jesus said, Luisa, you never sinned. 
you repaired everything as if you never sinned. And he says, this is what your children are going to do too. Our job is to repair. So when you see something on television like a, a crime, you say to Jesus, I'm sorry this has happened, Lord. I want to repair this situation. And all situations like this, in the name of all mankind, What's happening is you're repairing and redoing everything in the divine will. See, that's what I was talking about earlier. Us and the Holy Spirit. It's to repair and redo in the name of everyone and everything, past, present, and future. This is why when you are in heaven you will have like a divine anesthesia and you will not remember anything that you have done, thought or said that offended the Lord or anyone else. I can't hear you. Yes, we. So how do you repair to that prayer? I'm sorry. How do we repair? That's what you're going to learn when you read. You see, it's it, every time every when I see something. If some, a friend of mine goes to the hospital with cancer, I say, Lord, he, you know, repair the soul, heal the soul, heal all souls with cancer, heal all souls that are sick, heal everyone that has ever gotten ill. And what happens is, in the divine will, God is repairing as if nothing ever happened. There was everybody was healed. See, what's coming is the complete restoration of man. And that's our job. That's what we learn in the divine will. So, like, what, what is God going to teach you? What is God going to show you? It all depends on your docility. He, he wants complete the huge void of no love to be filled with love. It, this, is, this is a glorious life that God has given us. And all that he asks is that we say our fiat. And then he fills us with divinity. Okay, so the next is this. Okay, so he says basically. Uh, where did I where did I stop, Doctor? Where you must know. Okay, okay. You must know. This is a command from Jesus that this fulfillment of our divine will is so great that it numbers among the greatest works that the divinity has ever operated. This is, this is what God is asking us to enter into. And I want it to be known so that in knowing its greatness and the immense good that it contains, souls may esteem it and desire it. This goes back to what you were asking earlier. He says, Jesus says, I want this known. Now, it's not to my family. It's not to my friends. It's not to my neighbors. It's not to my coworkers. They don't want it. Jesus says, I want this to be known by you. As, as you read this, he's teaching you. You know, it's, it's very, very clear. It wants to be known so that you know the greatness, know the immensity, that souls may esteem it and desire it. As you read this, as you study this, as you get glimpses of it, all we want is, is to enter into this life that's recreating the face of the earth. 
todo lo que queremos hacer conforme entramos a esta vida es de hacer todo it's the true life of Jesus the true life of Mary found in Luisa es la vida verdadera de Jesús y de María que se encuentra en Luisa so he says three times did the divinity decide to operate on extra the first was in the creation and it was without intervention of the creature since none of them had yet come to the daylight the second was in redemption and with it it intervened a woman the holiest the most beautiful my celestial mama Mary was the channel Mary was the instrument that I used in order to fulfill the work of redemption and now the third is the fulfillment of my divine will that will be done on earth as it is in heaven that the creature may live and operate with the sanctity and the power of our divine will our work inseparable from creation and redemption just as the most holy trinity is inseparable nor can we say that a work of creation is complete if our divine will as we decreed does not act in the creature and live with the freedom the sanctity and the power with which it acts and lives in us triune God even more this is the most beautiful point the most radiant and high the seal of the fulfillment of the work of creation and redemption so the divine will is the completion of redemption and uh, uh, creation these are the divine decrees they must have full completion to fulfill this decree we triune God want to use another woman and that is you Louisa the woman was the incitement and the cause which Adam man fell into his misfortunes and we triune God want to use a woman to put things in order to release man from his misfortunes and restore his decorum honor and true likeness to us triune God just as he was created by us therefore be attentive and do not take things lightly so that's what he says to us this is the most important the most beautiful the most powerful of anything that God has done it's es sanctification so he says don't take this lightly Entonces, dice, no tomes esto this is not about any other thing it's about a divine decrees it is about giving us trying God field in order to let us accomplish the work of creation and redemption therefore we try on God entrusted my mama Mary to St. John so that she might place in him through and through him in the church the treasures the graces of all my teachings which I had placed in Mary during the course of my life as Mary had been entrusted to me I being her priest as well as all the laws the precepts and the doctrines that the church had to possess Mary faithful as Mary was and jealous of even one word of mine placed them in the faith my faithful disciple John so that they might not be lost therefore my mama had primacy over the whole church and so I did with you Louisa since the fia voluntastua was to serve the whole church I entrusted to you Louisa the to one of my ministers so that you might place in him everything I manifested to you about my divine will this was St. Honorable de Francia the goods contained in the divine will how the creature must enter into the divine will and how the paternal goodness wants to begin another era of grace sharing with the creature all the goods he possessed in heaven and restoring her lost happiness therefore be attentive and faithful to me so that's what God wants faithfulness and attentiveness to this great gift so I'll end there in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen Dearest Lord Jesus I thank you for your lessons of today free me from living one single instant outside of your will have pity on me and do not permit that I either know or acquire any other life except that of your divine will. Fiat et Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.